Good day everyone and welcome back again to our channel. For today's video, we are going to factor out the difference of two squares. I am Mam Karen, your teacher for today. Before we have the difference of two squares, let us recall getting the square root of a number. Say for example, we have one. So what is the square root of one? Yes, to simply get the square root, we find a number wherein when it is multiplied by itself, the answer is 1, and that is correct. So we have positive, negative, 1. In the square root, it is always positive and negative. How about the next one? So we have 4. The square root of 4 is equal to? Yes. That is positive, negative, 2. How about the third one? What is the square root of 16? Correct. That is positive, negative, 4. How about this? What is the square root of 36? Correct. That is positive, negative, 6. Next one. Square root of 225, yes, that is positive, negative, 15. Now let's add some variables. What is the square root of 25x squared? Yes, that is positive, negative, so we have that sign, and then we get the square root of 25, which is 5. And then for x squared, we divide it by 2, which is x. This one, 64, 8 to the 6. So let us get the square root of this term. So the square root of 64 is 8. So we have positive negative 8. How about 8 to the 6? Correct. So that is a raised to the third power. How did we get it? Simply 6 divided by 2. Since in radical form, the index become the denominator of the fraction. That's why it will become, so if we have square root of a to the 6, that is actually equivalent to a raised to 6 over 2. So we have 6 divided by 2, that's why it becomes a raised to the third power. How about 81 y to the fourth? So again, we get the square root. So this is, yes, positive negative 9. Y, correct, y squared. How about 100 m squared n squared? What is the square root of this one? Yes, you are also correct. This is positive negative 10 m n. And then for our last review, we have 121p to the 8. So let us get the square root of this number, which is 11, correct? So we have positive negative 11, and then p to the 8. So similar to 8 to the 6 a while ago, we are going to divide it by 2. So positive negative 11p to the Forward power. So uh, there you have it. That is how we get the square root of a term. So difference of two squares is an expression consisting of two terms separating by a minus sign. It is the product of the sum and difference of two terms and in symbols we write it as x squared minus y squared is actually equivalent to the quantity x minus y times the quantity x plus y. The two factors can be interchanged since in multiplication, commutative property is allowed. So let us have the following. So let us have the first example. I have here a squared minus 4. As you would notice, there are two terms on this expression. That's why it is called binomial. We have a squared and 4. The two terms are separated by a minus sign. Also notice that each term is a perfect square. 
So for S to get the factor of the difference of two squares, let us have the following steps. First one, find the square root of the first term. So we get the square root of A squared. And what is the square root of A squared? Yes, that is A. Simply write A this time. Next, find the square root of the second term. So what is the square root of the second term? Or the square root of 4? Yes, that is 2. For our third step, enclose those square roots in a parenthesis and express it as sum and difference of two terms. So we simply place the two terms inside the parenthesis. So we have here a and then 2, a and then 2. And then express it as sum and difference of two terms. So meaning you have the symbol positive here and the other symbol it's negative. So therefore, when we get the square root of a squared minus 4, it is actually equivalent to the expression quantity a plus 2 times the quantity a minus 2. Let's have the next example. In this case, we have 9x squared minus 25y to the 4. Once again, we get the square root of 9x squared. What is the square root of 9x squared? Yes, that is actually 3x. How about 25y to the 4th? What is the square root of 25y to the 4th? Correct. That is 5y squared. And then the two factors, we enclose them in a parenthesis and then express it as sum and difference. So we write another here. So we have 3x again and 5y squared. So we have the sum and the difference of two terms. So there you have it. This is the answer whenever we factor out 9x squared minus 25y to the 4. So let us have the third example. So let us factor out 4 p to the 6, q to the 4, minus 8, 1. Since both terms can be factored out, this is still difference of two squares. So once again, to do this, we get the square root of 4 p to the 6 and q to the 4. So we have, yes, that is 2 p. What is the square root of p to the 6? Correct. That is 3 since we divide it by 2. Then we have q to the 4th. Square root of q to the 4th? Correct. That is q squared. And then for the other one, what is the square root of 81? Yes, that is 9. So again, we copy the terms on the second parenthesis. p cubed, q squared, and then 9. And then lastly, we express it as a sum and difference of 2. So that is the factors, or those are the factors of 4p to the 6, q to the 4, minus 81. So let us have the fourth example. So I have here 112 minus 175 m to the 4. Let us get the square root of 112 and 175. Really? 112 and 175 are not perfect numbers? So how do we get the square root of these two terms? Can you think of other factoring technique that we already discussed that we can use to get the factors of this binomial term? Yes, 112 and 175 has a common factor of 7. Very correct. So first, let us factor out 7. So 112 divided by 7, yes, we have 16. We copy the sign. How about 175 divided by 7? Yes, that is 25 m to the 4th. Can we now factor out 16 minus 25 
m to the fourth using the difference of two squares? Yes, it will be easier now. So again, we got e7. What is the square root of 16? Yes, we have 4. How about 25m to the 4th? Correct. That is 5m squared. So for the other factor, that's also 4 and then 5m squared. And again, express it as sum and difference of two terms. So the factors of 112 minus 175 m to the 4th is actually equivalent to 7 times the quantity 4 plus 5 m squared times the quantity 4 minus 5 m squared. So let us have the following activities. So fill up the missing terms in the factors. 9a squared minus 49. So what is the missing term here? Yes, it is similar to the other factor, which is 3a. How about m squared minus 25? What is the other factor aside from m minus 5? Yes, the other one must be positive, so it's m plus 5. How about this one? x to the fourth minus y squared. So we already have x squared plus y. What is the other factor? Yes, so we have x squared minus y. Factoring is so easy with this difference of two squares. How about this? 49c to the sixth minus 100. On the other factor, it is given that we had the factor 7c cubed minus 10. So what must be the term here? Correct. That is 10. Since the square root of 100 is equivalent to 10. How about a to the 8 minus 225g squared? Correct. So we simply have here a to the 4. How about on this one? Correct. We simply have this term 15g. And then lastly, for this activity, how about 5t cubed minus 125t? So we already factor out 5t since we have a common factor of 5t. So we are left now with p squared minus 25. What are the factors of t squared minus 25? Yes, we have t plus 5 and t minus let us have a few more examples. So let us factor the following a to the fourth minus b to the six. So once again, we get the square root of both terms. So what is the square root of a to the fourth? Correct. That is a squared. How about b to the six? Correct. That is b cubed. And then express it as sum and difference of two cubes or two terms. So we have here positive and a negative symbol. Next one. What is the factors or what are the factors of 4x squared minus 36? So once again, we get the square root of 4x squared, which is, yes, it's 2x squared. How about 36? Yes, that is 6. So the other factor will also be composed of the terms 2x squared and 6. And then express it as sum and difference of the two terms. Let's have the next one. So it's 64a squared minus 81c to the 8. So what is the square root of 64a squared b to the 4? Yes, we have here 8. How about a squared? Yes, it's a. How about b to the 4? Yes, it's b squared. How about 81c squared? c to the 8. So it's 9c to the 4. And the other factor it's 8a 
b squared, that is right, 9c to the fourth. And then, do not forget to write the symbol between them. One must be positive, the other one is negative. How about 16a to the 6 minus 25b squared? Can you do it now? Of course you can. So we have here 4a cubed plus 5b. And the other factor, correct, it's 4a cubed minus 5b. Let us try 9r to the 4th minus 49p squared minus 6 or n to the 6. So this is 3r squared and then we have the square root of 49p squared n to the 6. Yes, that is 7t n cubed. So we also have the same terms. For our next factor, our second factor, we have 7t and q. So once again, the other one is positive while the other one is negative. So let us sum up what you have learned in this video by filling out the missing terms on this statement. So in factoring difference of two squares, the difference of two squares is the product of the sum and blank of the two similar terms of a binomial. Yes, it is the product of the sum and difference of two similar terms of a binomial. And then to factor difference of two squares, get the blank of each of the term. Yes, we always get the square root of each of the term. And write them as correct. Sum and difference of two terms enclosed in a parenthesis. So that is for the factoring of difference of two terms. So I hope you learned the lesson for this day. Once again, I am Mom Corin, your teacher. Have a good day.